For many of us, Christmas just wouldn't be the same without the traditional ham. But few people tucking into their festive feast would spare a thought for where that ham actually comes from beyond the supermarket. Sadly, most ham and bacon comes from highly intensive factory farms, nightmarish places where animals almost never see daylight. In many parts of the world, consumers are forcing pork producers to ban the worst practices and make piggeries more humane. But here in Australia, change is coming at an agonisingly slow pace, especially for the pigs. She loves going for a walk. She goes to schools regularly and, and walks into classrooms and things. This little piggy is not just yeah, clever. She's very, very lucky. She was one of a pair rescued during a nighttime raid on a piggery in Tasmania. I shoved them up my jumper and yeah, I couldn't leave them there. It's hard to believe she was almost dead because have a look at her. <laughs> She's porked up beautifully, isn't she? <laughs> Choose your words better. <laughs> she's, um, yes, yeah, she's, she's a healthy little pig now. She's a bit small, but that's because of her poor start. Emma Haswell, a veterinary nurse, rescues all kinds of sick and neglected animals and gives them sanctuary on her farm near Hobart. But it's the pigs that are her real mission. Ever since she found out what goes on behind the walls of hundreds of Australian piggeries. It's a dirty, dirty, dirty secret and they have to keep it hidden because people would be up in arms if they saw it. And I can say that, you know, I come from a long line of farmers. I have worked in all these places. I've seen horrific cruelty as someone who's worked on properties for a large part of my life. but. What is not acceptable is the way they farm pigs in Australia. When we found out years ago that most of our eggs came from chooks locked row upon row into tiny cages, it set off something of a consumer revolution. Battery hens were a no-no. Free range became the new mantra. Caged eggs were out. Well, now there's a new battleground in the food war. This is about as close to pig farms as you and I will ever get. Neatly packaged all ready to take home. What we don't see is the conditions that some of the animals have to endure in order to get it here. This is how bad it gets on our pig farms. Pregnant sows locked up for weeks on end in tiny stalls to breed the bacon that ends up on our tables. The vast majority of sows in Australia are living all their lives, except for the period when they're actually giving birth, in a stall like this. And that is a very, very confined condition. I think people just don't realise how the animals are having to live. Professor Don Broom of England's Cambridge University is appalled that Australia still uses sow stalls in piggeries. It was his research that led to the practice being banned throughout the UK. The industry says it's acceptable if you have one centimetre on that side and one centimetre on the other side mm. for, for a, a, a 300 kilo sow. Do you think it's acceptable? No, no sows are able to adapt properly to being confined in that smaller space. And this is a very intelligent animal which has very complex behaviour and to be in such a very confined environment it poses enormous problems for those animals. But Australian producers disagree with Professor Broom's research. They insist locking up sows is actually better for their welfare. The bitter argument is being thrust into public view by determined animal activists like Emma Haswell who've mounted illegal midnight raids on piggeries armed with video cameras. Do you think animal activists uh, are extreme in opposing sow stalls? Absolutely not. Sow stalls are now banned in the UK, parts of Europe and seven states of America. So why are they being extreme? Parts of the rest of the world are, are saying we don't want them, so why have we got them in Australia? Dr Katrina Warren 
is one of Australia's best known vets. We showed her the results of an activist's raid. There's a lovely rat for you as well. There's a rat running around in the piggery. Yeah. If more people were aware of conditions inside piggeries, what do you think the reaction would be? I think people would make an informed decision either to not eat pork products or to buy products that they knew was from ethically treated pigs. So uh, potentially free range pigs. So a little bit like the battery hen argument. Absolutely, and you look at the way the shift against caged eggs in the last few years, I don't know anyone that would choose to buy a caged egg now. Um, and I believe once this information is out there about how the intensive pigs are raised, the consumers will not want to buy it. Uh, that's an old shed. It's filthy, doesn't look good, and I can imagine people under seeing that and being a bit revolted by that, because they should be. A bit revolted. However, look at the pigs. Those pigs were in fantastic condition. We showed the pictures to Andrew Spencer, chief executive of the Australian pork industry. He argues the alternative to sow stalls is much worse. Sows on the loose, fighting. And he gave us his pictures to prove his point. They're trying to run through each other's ribs at 20 kilometres an hour. That does bad things to pigs. That is an unacceptable welfare situation. So you are completely happy with the welfare of no. those pigs in those pictures? No, I'm disgusted with the filth in that piggery. Let's, let's make it absolutely clear. But I have seen the pigs. And what's important to me and what's important in a welfare discussion is what is the state of those pigs? They look good. It turns out that a shareholder and director of the company operating that filthy piggery is Dr Ian Parrish, who also sits on the board running the pork industry. Dr Parrish declined our request for an interview. So the industry, the pork industry, is run by people who are happy to keep their animals in that sort of condition? No, and I think that's a pretty unfair extrapolation. You've got an activist who's gone into one piggery because their ultimate objective is a vegetarian one for our society. They want us out of business, so they will do anything that they can to do that. But when we asked to see conditions at any piggery in the country, we were told no. Instead, the industry provided footage of the Queensland University piggery and said research showed pregnant sows were actually happier in stalls. It's a big pregnant animal that's not looking to frolic around. It wants to eat and sleep. That's pig heaven. Sow stalls are good for sows. The research shows it. If you were to keep a dog or a cat in the conditions that we're keeping pigs in, you would be prosecuted. And yet, because we have a situation where it's for economic gain, pigs are being kept in crates that if you or I were to do it to an animal, it would be an offence. So how is it that farmers don't go to jail for locking up pigs? Well, about 20 years ago, the farming lobby and the federal government came up with this a code of practice which allows for pigs to be kept in stalls. This code makes it totally legal. And so animal lovers like Emma Haswell have taken up the fight. And they're getting results. Last February, Emma was tipped off about conditions in a Tasmanian piggery. She took her camera to investigate. And what she found was so shocking there's only so much of her footage we can show you. Was it the worst you've seen? Yeah, it was a living hell for animals. In factory farms, animals are living in urine and faeces and ammonia. And, you know, they're marinated in their own faeces as far as I can see. When police watched Emma's video, they charged the farmer with four counts of animal cruelty the fresh food people. Incredibly, that very same farmer, Gary Oliver, had been featured in a brochure for Woolworth supermarkets as one of its fresh food people. 
an irony the company describes as disappointing. The disappointment comes about through us having relied upon a standard to be uh, externally audited uh, with our producer. Um, that clearly say, wasn't met. In this instance, wasn't met, you're right. Michael Batiski, Woolworths fresh food manager, says he relied on standards administered by Australian Pork Limited that are supposed to certify producers and maintain quality. Woolley says the piggery was inspected and recommended for reaccreditation just three months before Emma's incriminating video. I mean, the pork industry has really put Woolworths in it, hasn't it? Look, the industry has actually let itself down. Very clearly, the producer um, has not managed his farm to the standard that was set. The industry association has not audited to that standard and verified that the standard was actually being met effectively. Um, from that position, um, I think they've let themselves down enormously. Mr Spencer, your industry inspector gave that farm the all clear, gave it the thumbs up. There's the report. There you go. I'm sure you've seen it before. You can re refresh never, your memory if you like. I've never seen it before. What happened on that piggery is horrific. I don't know anything about this report that you have just ambushed me with. I'm prepared to go and find out some stuff about it. What, hang on, you're the CEO and you don't know about your own auditor's I don't, report? No, I don't go through auditor's reports. There's thousands of those happening every year. You're very, very pregnant, aren't you? Animal activists you? believe there's a simple solution to the cruelty. It's up to the public and a new breed of free-range pig farmers like Lee McCosker. Hello, girls. Lee bought an old piggery, sow stalls and all, in northern New South Wales. So uh, what's going on? Where are all the pigs gone? <laughs> they're out in the paddock. Why did you stop using these? I believe that they're incredibly cruel and I, I couldn't bear to keep my sows in, in this sort of environment. Lee says her sows are now passive and more productive. How are you? Come on. The only downside oh, is that the free range pork she produces oh, is more oh, expensive oh, than oh. meat from intensive farms. Which means we all have a role in this issue. If we want to liberate pigs, we have to pay a bit more for it. How much more expensive would it be? Um, I'm, I'm going on estimates from this farm, it's roughly 20% more expensive to produce. Are you really telling me that all pigs could be raised like this and we'd all be able to afford it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah if they were treating their pigs like this, um, you definitely could still afford to be able to buy, purchase free range bacon. Australia is so far behind when it comes to farm animal welfare, it's appalling. You know, if other people can do it, then so can we. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.